And now, from the CFTK TV studios, this is Open Connection with your host, Robert Picto, brought to you by Terrace Hospice Society. Welcome to Open Connection. I'm your host, Robert Picto. You are made up of trillions of cells that over your lifetime normally grow and divide as needed. When cells are abnormal or get old, they usually die. Cancer starts when something goes wrong in this process and your cells keep making new cells and the old or abnormal ones don't die when they should. As cancer cells grow out of control, they can crowd out normal cells. On today's Open Connection, we sit down with members of the Community Angel Society. Community Angel Society? Uh -huh and it's spelled K-I-M-M-U-N-I-T-Y, and it's, um, I started the organization 2014 in honor of my friend that was uh, dealing with cancer. So through her process, uh, when she was diagnosed, uh, she was down in Vancouver for six weeks and getting treatment there, not working, no medical coverage, very stressed out about, you know, three children, single mom, what am I gonna do for income? Um, so we did a fundraiser for her and then through that process, that fundraising process, we live in a small caring community. Um, many people came forward saying, oh, so and so is going through this and so on, which really hurt my heart and triggered me to go, okay, something needs to be done. And we started the nonprofit society. Denise was part of Kim's um, natural medical um, recovery or not recovery treatment I guess would be the the term because Denise is a, a massage therapist and she would um, volunteer her time to help Kim when she was uncomfortable and in pain so um, Denise was very apprised to the situation right from the get-go. Kim and I worked we met we both worked at Mantiques in the mall and we uh, we met there and we just clicked we <laughs> We had a lot of fun there and then I think about a month after we were working together uh, we moved in together so she moved in with my kids and I and we lived together I think off and on throughout the years for about five years or something like that so yeah yeah very close we were very close we were more like sisters than than friends so yeah we had a lot of fun. I actually met her um, through through Donna here and uh, and throughout the years when you live in a small town you get to know each other in a boat and so that's how I got to know Kim and then and then a little bit more during those um, those treatments when I'd come to Donna's house with my massage table anytime that you're working with somebody you're always intuitively asking uh, what they need and and asking for feedback so it always is is what they need um, the body tells you as well as they do so it's it's just a very it's very honorable to work with people um, at that level it's a real privilege there's such a wide variety of different stages where of people's health that I see uh, so I've over the years have worked a lot with different people um, at different stages and sometimes end stages of their life and uh, so, like I said, it's a real honor. You adjust your techniques and your energy to the, the situation. And sometimes they're shorter treatments, sometimes they're longer treatments. And you just really, um, you're just really connecting with that person and what they need at the time. It, I know that sometimes when I came to the treatment, treatments for Kim, um, sometimes they were they were shorter. Sometimes they were longer. It's just exactly what she she needed at that moment. Open connection will be right back after these messages. And now from the CFTK TV studios, this is Open Connection with your host Robert Picto. When I found out I had cancer, it was the hardest day of my life. But. Life is bigger than cancer. Thanks for staying with us. Best friends are almost indescribable. They are there for you no matter what the circumstance, looking on without judgment with only your best interest at heart. You can confide in your best friend more than any other person. 
Sometimes they even know you better than you know yourself. Let us return to the conversation as Donna shares more about her BFF. If one of us weren't able to sleep at like two in the morning or whatever, and you know, uh, we would go, okay, well, I can't sleep. No, me either. So we just get in the car and go for a drive. <laughs> or we'd get up at whatever god awful hour and start playing cards and, you know, and then you'd get competitive at the card game and, you know, then the, the voices would get louder. And yeah, so it was a lot of fun, a lot of innocent fun. It was very shocking. So I was with Kim throughout um, her medical um, journey, if you would like to say that, I guess. Um, so when we got the diagnosis that she was terminal um, and she had the words, I will never forget them, is Kim, do you want to hear your, the outcome? And she, of course she said yes. And, and uh, they told her, you have a year. Um, and, and you'll be lucky if you get to two. So I remember she reached over and she grabbed my hand because she was shocked. And of course I'm, I'm there for her support. So I'm trying to keep it together. And uh, yeah, it was, it was a shock. Yeah, for sure it was a shock. But um, we, we rode the ride together and we supported one another. And you know, she was a very amazing amazing person her personality never changed her sense of humor right to the bitter end was was hilarious she would always make fun of just anything like she just had the greatest sense of humor so i think that um her whole outlook on life and her whole personality it, i think it served her well and and she not to say there wasn't challenges but she she handled it with grace i, I was very proud of her and Donna, you have, we were just talking about this the other night and you were just mentioning that she well surpassed that year. Yes, so she, they, after her diagnosis, she lived for four and a half years. Yeah, so she, yeah, she said, no, nope, I'm gonna, <laughs> I'm gonna heck with you, I'm gonna live longer and, and she did. She, she changed the way she ate. Um, she made some, you know, other changes and uh, she just decided I'm going to live life and she did. Her initial treatment, they sent her down to Vancouver for her radiation. Oh, well, so initially she went to Vancouver to do all of the testing. Her mom lives in Kelowna, so then she went to Kelowna for her radiation. And we talked on the phone daily, uh, sometimes multiple times a day. And then when her radiation was done, I went down and picked her up and then she came home and then her chemo was a pill form of chemo so she was able to uh, pick her medications up at the hospital and she was able to do the rest of her treatment here in town which was really nice her and i were very close so she was very open with that situation um, so that's where i grabbed a couple of friends carlene lemiski being the the key one um, and we put a big fundraiser together to help her with those costs and uh, she was Kim was beyond grateful for that like many tears and yeah so uh, it certainly alleviated her stress because when I would talk to her on the phone it was a consistent pattern like okay I just had to put this on my credit card I don't know how I'm gonna pay that and you know now these bills or is my hydro gonna get cut off or you know so there was those conversations and it, and it stressed her Yes, and I went through it with my own friend actually as well, um, that when she was diagnosed, uh, she, this was in 2005 that she passed away, but it, it got really expensive really quick when you're seeking alternative and healthy products um, to boost the, the immune system and to give extra support to the body. So um, I'm quite familiar with, with that. Uh, journey and how stressful it is and how stressful it is on on everyone else around in the you know family and friends uh, the worry on top of that uh, so yeah so this is really near and dear to my heart um, the the whole organization the philosophy and Donna's vision I went to the pajama party the pajama party was a hoot <laughs> I actually didn't even know if I was wanting to go. <laughs> I was like, pajamas. <laughs> and it was the best event ever. It was so relaxing and all of us women were just so amazed that we could be so relaxed 
uh, to be in our pajamas at an event. And I remember I had to stop in to Walmart of all places um, with my pajamas on. And I was like, ooh, okay, this is an interesting perspective going out in your pajamas. <laughs> there were onesies, there were flannel pajamas, there were robes with big fuzzy slippers. There were ladies in curlers and yeah, it was a lot of fun. A young lady here in Terrace, uh, Chantelle Bachuk, had come up with the idea. She was in, I think it was Saskatchewan and she had witnessed something very similar and she approached me and said, hey, I saw this fundraiser. What do you think? I'm like, all right, let's go. And uh, so she spearheaded it and uh, yeah, and it was a, a great success, a lot of fun. Open Connection will be right back after these messages. And now, from the CFTK TV studios, this is Open Connection with your host, Robert Picto. Back then, the joy of the holidays were overshadowed by the pain of my treatments. I made one last call. The caring person at the other end of the line is the reason why I'm here today. And I am thankful the Canadian Cancer Society was there for me, but they won't be here without you. So please, donate now. Welcome back to Open Connection. Frank Pierce was tasked with raising money to build a YMCA in Washington, D.C. In two years of campaigning, he raised $270,000, but still needed $80,000, and donations had stopped coming in. In 1905, Pierce partnered with Charles Summer Ward. The Jew created a campaign to raise the rest of the money, trying things that no one had ever done. Let us return to the conversation as Jonna shares some of her fundraising ideas. So the, the first one we did was for Kim, and then from that, uh, that one was um, a dance basically in a, a silent auction. And then from there is where Community Angels kind of uh, evolved from, from that original event. And then from Community Angels, we um, started doing different types of fundraisers. So we do the wine and scotch tasting. Uh, we do the ladies night pajama party. We do the dude looks like a lady. So those are our three major events that we do uh, throughout the year. And then we host little raffles, that type of thing uh, in between. So yeah, we try and try and do fun community fundraisers, right? So it, it serves multiple purposes. It's, it's an event that's fun for the community par to partake in. And then at the same time, we're raising money for, for the Community Angels cause. So Several people had come forward uh, when they heard the story about Kim and several people had come forward um, telling stories of other people that were going f through similar situations. And from there, it, it just, like I said, it hurt my heart to just think, because I know what Kim went through and to imagine other people and families going through the same thing and, and um, you know, not having that financial support, it, it, uh, it just didn't seem right. It didn't sit well with me. So um, that's when I founded the, uh, the nonprofit society. I think I spent six to eight months researching all, what was all involved in a nonprofit society, what was involved in a registered charity. Um, you know, I had asked, connected with a few doctors in town, naturopathic doctors just to see, to feel out, you know, is this a viable option or so um, through that research, I thought, yep, yeah, it's, it's a go. <laughs> and I talked to my husband um, and he was very supportive and because we needed, there was initial, a few thousand dollars that needed to be put up front. And he was, he, he didn't even bat an eye. He was like, yeah, you do what you need to do. And, and away it went. And then uh, we approached several people in the community and oh, I don't know what to say about Terrace. I have never experienced anything like the community of Terrace and, and the people, when the people hear of anybody in need, they just reach out and they, it's almost the wallets open. And it's like, what else do you need from us? It's, I've never, people in Terrace have hearts like none, no other, it's incredible. When Donna contacted me to give treatments for Kim, and so, and then I just attended as a, 
as a community member to some of the events. And it wasn't until this all came about was Saturday evening when we were having a visit, um, saying goodbye to Donna and, and, and this all came up and I asked her and I said, who's taking over Community Angels? And she said, nobody at this moment. And so we both looked at each other <laughs> and had that little look. <laughs> and so we had a meeting on Monday and, and uh, just you know, we're moving forward. I'm just a figurehead. The, the directors and the people that have been involved in Community Angels, they already are very well seasoned. They know what they're doing. They've, they've done it already. Um, and uh, I'm not, it, it's really interesting because I'm really excited to actually meet and get to know more of the, the directors as well. And this just fits in with a lot of my, um, my work in the past, my, my own philosophy of care in the community. So I, and I've done different community events. So I really don't anticipate any you know, any hiccups or anything. I'm, I'm just, I'm just filling in. <laughs> and Donna, and, and Donna's, Donna's going to keep in contact and, and, you know, we're going to be, she's going to be guiding me through the process. When my very first uh, patient that approached me was from an interview that you had done to get community angels out in the community and get us known. So it, w it was actually because of you. And um, yeah, so through that interview, uh, a lady had connected with me and said, I'm going through this situation. I should clarify, Community Angels, we have a very strict uh, confidentiality uh, policy. So within the community, it's a small community, so we, um, we respect people's privacy. So when somebody approaches us, there are no names. So I just, I, it, as I'm talking here, I don't want it to sound like I'm, I'm not willing to share a name. Well, I'm not willing to share a name, but it's, it's to protect their, their privacy, which is something we very strongly believe in. So this lady approached and um, from there it just went on. So it, it was basically uh, your interview that, that got the ball rolling and, and got the word out in the community. So. Open Connection will be right back after these messages. And now, from the CFTK TV studios, this is Open Connection with your host, Robert Picto. Did you know that about 4 in 10 cancer cases in Canada can be prevented? There are things we eat, drink, breathe, and do that affect our cancer risk. But the good news is that we can reduce our cancer risk by changing the world around us so that healthy choices are easy choices and we are better protected where we live, work, and play. What could our future look like by 2042? If we act now, we could prevent about 5,300 HPV-related cancer cases, 12,000 sun-related cancer cases, 44,300 alcohol-related cancer cases, and 50,200 smoking-related cancer cases. These are just a few of the cancers we can prevent. There are many more. Before World War II, healthcare in Canada was, for the most part, privately delivered and funded. In 1947, the government of Saskatchewan introduced a province-wide universal hospital care plan. By 1950, both British Columbia and Alberta had similar plans. In this final segment of Open Connection, Donna shares how the Community Angel Society can help. Until Kim got sick, I had no idea of the financial burden that people took on when they were ill. It was my ignorant assumption that, you know, our medical covered everything and it's not. So when you think about it, you're flying down to Vancouver, you have accommodations to pay for, you have food to pay for, plus your expenses when you're at home. There's medication, not all the medications are covered just because you have cancer. So it's very expensive to, to be ill. So typically we do the Dude Looks Like a Lady in October, but due to COVID and gathering 700 people at the Renly Theater just doesn't seem to be prudent this year. So we're gonna hold off on large gatherings and we'll do uh, things that we can do 
socially respectable uh, events. So we're going to do uh, raffles, those types of things. Uh, Norm McCure from the Big Norm's Bistro has been phenomenal, phenomenal at coming up with uh, fundraising events. So he's doing, you know, he's taken it upon himself to do little fundraisers within his bistro. So I believe since last year, Norm has raised on his own, he's taken it upon himself, close to $25,000. Yeah. And that's just a community member, a business owner in the community that's decided, oh, well, community angels can't do these big fundraisers. What can I do? And away he goes. So, yeah, it's incredible. So the next gathering would be probably, if it's safe, depending on how things go, will probably be in the spring, which will likely be the wine and scotch tasting. Yeah, so I will come back to town. I have promised to come back to town for the first, you know, events or until I, you know, everything, everybody feels confident that uh, they don't need me anywhere. So, yeah. Well, Community Angels has a website and on there is an application form. And so that would be the first step. Uh, I had in the past used my personal number, so um, we can no longer do that, obviously. So we are in the process of doing that. So if you check our website, uh, www.communityangelsociety.ca, um, we will uh, post our phone number uh, and uh, you can always, yeah. Yeah, that would be the best way, would be through the website for now until we get our phone number up and ready. And I would say probably 90% of the time there's there's tears like they're very grateful um, and almost beside beside themselves that the community would gather together to, to help them there yeah it's it's pretty incredible yeah I feel very blessed that I've been able to been able to be a part of that it's just really brand new so we'll see how the journey goes really looking forward to it Really looking forward to working with Donna and, and the rest of the, the board and the community on a whole in this. It's, it's extremely important. And as we're moving forward, it's, um, it's getting to be a little bit more prevalent in our community that this kind of support is, is really vital, vital for our community. So it's a real honor to be in this position. I have such mix, mixed emotions. I'm very excited for the new journey my husband and I are on, but I just beyond emotionally sad to be leaving this community. It's such a beautiful community and the people are so lovely and I am going to miss it immensely, but uh, life goes on and <laughs> new, new things happen. So yeah, I, I will come back. I will be back for sure. Camp Food Time gives you a place that you feel safe and like you can open up to anybody. Everyone is so kind and you get to do lots of fun activities. We support them in a medical standpoint and just as a kid standpoint. Just be a kid. Thank you for joining us for this episode of Open Connection. The greatest distance in the existence of man is not from here to there, but that connection forms mind to his heart. If we can conquer that distance, we can soar like an eagle and realize our mercy within. I'm Robert Pictow.